Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. I have a double page layout for you today. This will be my second layout I've created with the Fabulous Collection, which is this Halloween inspired special from Close to My Heart. It's a really cute paper. My favorite is this black and white polka dot with a tone on tone melon stripe on the other side. You get two of each sheet. I already used the other one of those, but look how cute these little frames are. So when I saw this kitty and then there's a cat on the sticker sheet as well. We've got the little kitty and the Halloween cutie. I immediately thought of my kitties and I took these pictures. There were no pets tortured in this photo shoot. Don't worry. <laughs> this is Dave and little photo shoot wearing his Halloween costume. You guys, he's so ridiculous. He actually enjoyed it. Dave is more like a dog. Sybil, on the other hand, felt like the costume was attacking her. So after the one photo, I let her, I let her escape. But I have some three by three photos. He's got his little bat wings, kind of like dragon wings, and then just his little cape. It's like little puss in boots, right? So fun. So I am going to clear these up and grab my Versamats and we can get started. Since this is a double page layout, I'm going to bring in both of my Versamats. Honestly, I tried to narrow this down to a single page and I was just gonna pick my, you know, a couple favorite photos and I couldn't do it. There was just too many photos that were so cute. So double page it is. I wanted to start my layout on White Daisy because that's gonna help me stretch my pattern paper and there's also a lot of vivid, color and just fun pattern papers going onto this layout. So the white daisy will give us kind of a visual break, just a little resting place for the eye. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna do these two photos over here and then I'll do a grid with my three by three photos on this side. So I am following an inspiration layout I found on Pinterest and I will leave that linked in the description box below if you wanna check that out. These are cut to four inches by 12 and I'm gonna run one vertical and then on this side, I'm going to run it horizontal here. On this side, I'm going to layer this piece with this sea breeze pattern paper. It's got little stars and circles and the frames on the other side. And that is 11 by four inches. And I have this leftover strip of the melon stripe. So I think I'm gonna pull that or put that right underneath here. So we see that color popping out. And I'm just layering up. I wanna make sure I have the same pattern paper on both sides. Let's mat these on a piece of black cardstock. That way I can adhere them all down and move them around as one unit. And, that, and plus the black is really gonna make these photos pop. I printed them with the white frame. So we have the white and then the black border behind it. Now this pattern paper, I cut this with a shape um, from the Art Philosophy Collection. I'll leave that listed in the description box below, but I thought it'd be fun and just give it some character. And I love that fun pattern paper. So anytime I have pattern paper, I like to ink the edges. So I'll go ahead and do that really quick. I am trying to use my Cricut a lot more. So just little things here and there. And I love it when I do. It always turns out really fun. And this is something that might be difficult to cut by hand. So it's nice to have those shapes and just to be able to do this on the Cricut. So I mentioned earlier, Dave was like a dog. He is, he's just one of those cats that thinks he's a dog. In fact, he sleeps in the dog kennels with the dogs on their beds in there. The kennels are open, but he goes in there and curls up with them and it's too cute. So he got a kick out of these costumes and he got really feisty and he was popping out of the bucket and just having a grand old time embracing his inner uh, character when I put him in these costumes. Let me bring this pattern paper in to map these photos here. And I think I called it Sea Breeze earlier. It is Sea Brook. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to slide this over. I want more of that pattern showing. And then we will bring in the same melon stripe up top. Now, typically, I like to use shapes to kind of build up my embellishment clusters. So I am thinking a circle up here. I have a couple dies. Let's go with the larger one. That is about four and a quarter. And I'm going to cut the Sea Breeze, Sea Brook. Wow. How long am I going to do that? Cardstock and only half the circle is showing, but I'm going to add the title and then add my stickers kind of clustered up on this circle here. Now, this is an oldie but goodie. I dug through my Halloween stamps. It's called Creepy Cobwebs, and this is no longer available, but sometimes you might find luck finding them on Facebook. There's some used close to my heart sites where you can find uh, retired products or even um, eBay. So, 
you never know. If you really love something, you can uh, go hunting for it. I wanted to add some cobwebs for embellishments, so I stamped that, and I will fussy cut that out by hand because it does not have a coordinating die. I'm also going to fussy cut this frame, the kitty in the frame, from this pattern paper. There is a frame that looks very similar to this on the sticker sheet and the kitty, so I could have done this without fussy cutting, but it is slightly smaller, so I thought, why not just use my pattern paper here? And I like to cut it out from the paper, and then I can work a little bit easier to bring out that shape, the decorative shape from the frame. So if you have a good pair of these microtip scissors, this does help simplify this process. So I will pop this up on foam tape, but I think that's pretty darn cute. Maybe down here, and I'll go ahead and do this cobweb off camera so you don't have to watch that. I'm thinking I might want to move my title down, and then let's bump this up. Now we have that visual triangle, and I think that's going to be a better balance. I thought it'd be fun to bring in this candlestick because there are candles in the photo behind the kitties. So I thought that would just kind of go along with the scene. And I'm going to stamp on this. Now this stamp set here, let me get this into my mini Misty really quick. I have the Boo Crew. This was last year's Halloween special. This stamp is still available or it was at the time I created this video. It is so cute. It does come, there's one with or without coordinating thin cuts and this says too cute to spook so I'm lining it up and then I will close my misty door and pick that up and now we can just ink it up I'm using black ink here and this way I can stamp it a couple times and make sure I get a nice crisp image so let's check it out and see how we did here actually that looks pretty good I could trim off the bottom of this circle, but you know, it's fine. It'll just be hiding back there. Let me ink up the edges really quick to finish that off and then layering it back behind my pattern papers here. And then we'll just frame it in with our embellishments. A little more stash diving. This is the pennant banner alphabet, and I know for sure this one's not available, but I love these little pennants. So you could totally cut this by sh uh, hand. This is a really simple shape, but do you see that banner in the photo behind Dave that says boo? I actually made that several years ago, and it kind of inspired this idea, and I wanted to recreate that banner on this layout. So I used melon cardstock to cut my little flag shapes here. And then we're going to, just like in the picture, spell out the word boo. So any tiny little alphabet would work well for this. And I'm just practicing a couple times before I stamp on my little pennant banners or the flags here. So B, let me clean that off. Whoops, there's Dave right there, always in the way. And then O, and we will do another O. And then I dug through my stash and found a tiny little cat. This is called Fright Night. See that cute little silhouette of a cat there? So I have a silhouette in the actual banner I made of a cat. So I thought, oh my gosh, this is so perfect. It's slightly bigger, you can see, but I think that it will, you know, still give us the feel and look I'm going for. I love my stamp collection. So anytime I get to dive into it and use these little images just makes me really happy. It's so fun. So let's just swoop this across the upper corner here. And yes, that is going to be just how I envisioned. I have these tiny little acrylic stars and there are an eclectic mix of shapes in here. There's burst and stars and then the cutouts of the negative portion of the stars and just different star shapes. But I thought some of these little black bursts would be really fun just to add some texture and a little interest to each of the clusters. And there are a couple different sizes. So you can see I'm just making a triangle. This bat is from the sticker sheet. We'll put him right there. And now the this is the fabulous stamp set. So there's his pumpkin and the cat. I'm going to cut out the pumpkin and use the sticker cat because in the picture Dave is sitting in the pumpkin bucket so I kind of wanted to you know use that idea and dress up the kitty up top. There are several different pumpkin faces that you can add from that stamp set so I chose this one and yeah that is super cute. I'm going to pop this up on some foam tape and then the actual sticker of the kitty will just be flat so it's going to make it look a little more dimensional like he's sitting inside the pumpkin. 
Let me grab my paprika ink really quick. Actually, I want to add just a little uh, dimension to the edge of this pumpkin so it doesn't quite look so flat. Super simple. We'll just ink him up a little bit with the darker paprika color. I wanted to add some more cobwebs. So this is the fabulous stamp set and you can see this is meant to go on a corner, but you can totally layer this behind elements and no one would ever know that you've got like a 90 degree angle missing out of that. So that totally works. A little more stash diving. I am bringing out all the Halloween stamps. This is called Beware. And there is this little journaling block on here with the kind of frame, little swirly frame and bats. And it is my go-to for my Halloween pages. I'm gonna layer those together. And then it needs a little orange. So I was thinking this cauldron, but it's kind of big. Let's try this little pumpkin. I just wanna bring that orange color down to this cluster. And I think this is going to work. Let me just move these around a little bit. Yes, I definitely like that. I'm gonna pop that up on some foam tape. So I'll just cut a piece and stick it to the back there. There isn't a big story behind this layout, so this little journaling block will be perfect. And I love to use these Le Pen journaling pens. They come in different colors. They're really nice. And I'm just going to write kind of the basics. Dave and Sybil looking so adorable in their Halloween costumes, and then October of or 2022. I always like to have the year on there. Even though I scrapbook each album, each year has their own album, I still like to have the date on there. It's just kind of one of my things. So let me get my journaling block adhered here with a little tape runner and then we will pop up our little pumpkin. Look at how this tiny little pop of orange finishes that cluster off. It made such a big, big difference. So let me hold this up and you can check out the detail. I would love to know in the comments, do you dress up your pets? Do you take them trick-or-treating? Do you dress them up for pictures? Do they love it? Do they hate it? <laughs> I've got a dog also that enjoys it, and I usually uh, put him in his little costume, but I'd love to hear what you guys do with your furry friends. As always, everything I use is listed in the description box below, and if you're looking for more Halloween inspiration, then you want to watch these videos right here. Thank you so much for spending time with me, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!